Blessings. Good day, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Ambrose Carroll of Bring the Church, letting you know once again that the race is on. Uh, as you all know, we talk about uh, race. We talk about the values of what it means to be a part of Bring the Church. Uh, and we talk about resilience, what it means to be aboriginal, courageous, and empowering. The race is on. And indeed, as you look at the context of of our world with indeed wars, genocide, all types of things going on in the world, you know that we are in a race for the very survival of the planet. When you look at climate change and look at uh, what just happened at COP28 with the Paris Agreement, that individuals are really playing with something that is very serious, that the whole planet is in a place where we need healing, and we've started at Green the Church what we call environmental stewardship revival, because we believe that even in terms of climate change and, you know, black folk don't always call themselves environmentalists, but we believe that we are revivalists. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, seek God's face, that then we would hear from heaven and God would heal our land. And so, brothers and sisters, the race is on. We want to make sure that we are doing everything in our power to be good stewards of this planet that God has created. And we're so glad to be visited by so many brothers and sisters from around the world who are uplifting in so many ways. The race is on. Glad to have with us today, Dr. Reginald Parker. Dr. Reginald Parker of Optimal Tech. He is a graduate from MIT has an MBA in finance from Florida State University and a PhD from Georgia Institute of Technology. That's right. You can't out PhD him. There are brothers and sisters who are doing great things in this space that are not, he's not new to this space. And a lot of times we think of things as being a fad. We think of things as, you know, these new technologies and these new places. And I want to let you all know that African-American people, right? Uh, we are not just learning what it means to be involved in STEM. We are not just learning that engineering is important. Our legacy, even in these fields of mathematics, is rich and it runs deep. And individuals like Dr. Parker, who has been in this thing for over 30 years, uh, are a part of the solutions. And we want to encourage everybody listening Listen, get your sons, your daughters, your grandkids, let them know that there is light and that there are people working towards this revival. Good day, Brother Parker. Again, God bless you, man. Glad to have you, man. Listen, tell us a little bit about your journey, man, just as I read your bio and just knowing you as, as a brother, someone who is down to earth, someone uh, who understands Black culture and who understands Black church culture, uh, that to live in the world that you live in and to make the decisions that you make as an entrepreneur, to be on the cutting edge of these fantastic technologies. Tell us more about your story. Where are you from and how did you get into this movement? Born in Philadelphia and at a three years of age, we moved to Bolivia, North Carolina, and I prob it probably has grown by 10 people since then, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> met, met, you know, some people, we had a couple of people and then people left. Right, right. But, uh, um, it has wow. one stop sign in the city. But wow. that was the place where my grandma and granddaddy were. And, and they loved my mom. This was my father's mother and father, but they really loved my mom. And we wow. were always over their house. And as a consequence, we were always in the church. There you go. In St. James Baptist Church, right down the street. Come on. Grandma, granddaddy, and mom always had us there, vacation Bible study, uh, singing in a junior choir, junior yep. usher board. There and you so go. when we went to Savannah, that legacy continued. And the church bus used to come pick me up every Sunday morning, carry me to uh, the mighty, mighty fortress. St. John Baptist Church. My pastor was Matthew Southall Brown. Wow. He was not only my pastor, but my mentor, okay. and a mentor to Senator Raphael Warnock as well. Wow. So, you know, I grew up with uh, Raphael under the tutelage of Matthew Southall Brown, a great man of God. 
And the things that I learned not only in the church and home and my grandma's home were very environmental. We don't call ourselves environmentalists, but if right. you think about it, grandma would say, close that door. We're not trying to heat up the whole outside. <laughs> you sure right, Doc. You she sure right. Us, Get out that refrigerator. <laughs> you letting all my air out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was judicious. She understood the consequence of action. Yes, sir. And that it affected the light bill. Yep. And we did things at the church to try to positively impact not only the light bill, but the water bill and what have you, because in the beginning of the Bible, it told us about stewardship. Come on. So we may not call ourselves environmentalists, but when we say stewardship of this planet, I, I know that the definition of environmentalists is wrapped up in being a steward of this planet. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, so I was taught this at a very young age, and I, I then began my journey toward college and I wanted to be a chemical engineer. Okay, I get it. And I learned that my chosen profession had caused a lot of the environmental issues. So, wow. so I said, how can I use this nascent, unique knowledge to actually improve things? And so I've been using my engineering background, my chemical engineering background, my business background to make steps and strides in building technologies, build business models, relationships to improve the environment because it started at a young age by having a mama, right. grandparents, churches, pastors, mentors to teach you about being a good steward. So... After developing my first solar farm, which was the first African American solar farm utility scale. Hold on, Doc. Wait, Doc. Listen, man. Doc, man, what you just said, man, is so beautiful and so profound. I really don't want to move past it because a lot of us tell our stories, especially as clergy, or sometimes we expect, you know, clergy to have these uh, conversations of how they grew up and how it led them into ministry. And indeed, like what you are in is definitely ministry. Oh, right? marketplace ministry. That's oh my God, doing. right? I'm a marketplace minister. Doc, I'm the story. Jesus into the boardroom. Got it, Doc. Doc, you have to, Doc, because the story that you told is our story. The story that you told is my story. And again, as we breathe into young folk, yes, it is about the church and the institution, but it's also about how we are, who we are in the world. Right. We're ambassadors of Christ. Hey, man. You said it's and, a marketplace. And, and, say, 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 say that again. It's a mark marketplace. Marketplace minister. Yes, sir. I bring the word of God into the marketplace, or else the devil is gonna reign. Wow. Wow. That, yeah, I I I just really want to want to park there because I want individuals who are listening to understand that when we're talking about these things and the environment and everything, that is not something that is outside of our church experience. I, I'll say this to you. The Bible is clear when it says, where is God? Depth of hell, heaven, Come on. left, right, center. Come there on. is no place that no you can place. keep God out. But if you mm. want to keep God out, then you want to let Satan in. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, that that's not a religious thing. That's yeah. a faith. I, I hear you, Doc. Yes, yes sir. And, 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 and if indeed. you have two hearts, then you have two masters. You have two masters. So if you think you're going to take off your God hat and then go to work and put on another hat. Hey. Hey. The only other hat other than a God hat. Wow. And I know we're, we're going somewhere, but that just opened up something for, for me looking at your bio, you know, not only we talk about the academics, and you definitely could have stayed in the world of academics with your resume, you could have moved into GE, uh, any of the Fortune 500 companies, but what you just stated about how you serve and how you move and how you do your work, do you think that's a part of what led you into entrepreneurialism? They use the term serial entrepreneur, it, right? So how, how does that fit in there? I worked in Fortune 500. Okay. I've worked in academia. Yes, sir. I even work in top tier strategy. Right. Yeah. Um, when I was in academia, 
and a boss to tell me to grow under a rock. What does that mean? My, he said my light was shining too bright. Wow. <laughs> ooh, ooh. I, I hear you now. When, when I was in top tier strategy, I was told that I was too sensitive and that I wore my race on my sleeve. Mm. And that's because... You know, uh, one of the guys asked me, could he go to church with me so he could see everybody dance like he saw people on TV? Oh, wow. I heard that. And so, you know, I, I schooled him. Yep. And he said I was too sensitive. I know. So, no, you you just, just asked to be schooled. Right. I said, you're just so ignorant. There was so much information that was required to bring you to a point of sensibility. Right. But don't blame me for your miseducation. That's it. That's it. And when I was in it's a hard place. A corporate, I, I had a similar type of issue where they would tell me, oh, you can't do that. You know, nobody else has ever done that before. And when I did it, <laughs> I didn't fit the box that they wanted me in. Yes, sir. So in one case, you know, I, I was outside of the box. Okay. In another right. case, I was outside of them. I kept being outside of their box that they yeah. wanted to put me in. And I wasn't trying to be in their box. I was trying to be where God wanted me to be. Yes, sir. He doesn't put me in a box. He puts me on a mission. Yes, sir. And those that are, are free indeed. And those so that God when, makes free are free indeed. And what was interesting is, is that I had invented something while I was in academia. Okay. And this guy said, the only way I'm going to fund you is if you leave the university because you cannot be bound by them and take yeah. my money. And he was a man of God. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I get it. And that's what freed me. I get it. It was a big risk. But, you know, I'm not here to do what man Tenure does. and everything, huh? Right. Yeah. And shortly after that, uh, Reverend Carroll, I, uh, me and my team, we developed the first African American utility scale solar farm. Ah, say say more. And um, I looked at it. I said it was good, but I said also it's not good enough. Come on, Doc. I said there's been two things. This is that first, everything that I bought to make this solar field was bought out of Southeast Asia. Right. Correct. And then in eight years, all of the energy would have produced people would be using more energy. You know, and the way I thought about it was, number one, every year people buy more goods that yeah. require more electricity. Yeah. And the electricity costs keep going up. Yeah. And those three things should not be true. Mm. Because we're wasting energy. Got it. And we're not making our own energy. We're buying it from somebody rather than owning so we so we so you had a solar farm, but you were still your people were still the consumed consumers. Now the, the big thing about the solar farm, I fought to make sure that the people in the area were the ones to build it and they got a living wage. Okay. And Excellent. this was the, the blackest county and the poorest county in North Carolina. Okay. And I said two things, and this is what you know, Dr. Green Power. The phrase that Dr. Green Power sure. came up with. One sure. is we need to use energy better, and okay. then we need to use better energy. Got it. So got I, it. I am in the game of making sure we stop wasting energy, and then the energy that we use don't doesn't harm us. Yeah, man. All right, all right, all right. This is man. We gonna need five, six interviews to get to it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> listen, man, this has been fantastic so far. Again, this is Green the Church. This is the race. Letting you all know that the race is on. We're here today with Dr. Reginald Parker, Dr. Green Energy himself. And uh, we've been talking about life, legacy, theology, spirituality, everything that undergirds. Let's see if we, we can turn the corner to some of the exciting pieces that he's connected to some of our own partnership that we have working with Green the Church. And let's talk about what's the future, like what's going on right now, Inflation Reduction Act, what's going on with, with energy in our homes and the energy in our churches? What can we do to do better? 
and to be better stewards. So there's billions of dollars coming down, and this is the closest, best thing that we can touch, taste and feel, that mimics reparations. Yes, sir. Because, you know, they say, okay, the dollars are reparations, but we also have to look at our community and the harm that oil and coal and nuclear has caused. I'm going to spit three facts to you. First, one in five people on this planet die because of the combustion of fossil fuels. Wow. One in five. One in five. Yeah, one in five. And this is a Harvard stat, right? Harvard Medical. I hear you. Um, did the analysis. Number two, one billion people on the earth have no access to power. Come on, man. None. And then 30 to 40 percent, according to MIT, of the energy we use is wasted. Wow. Wow. So with this money coming down and given the harm that hits our people, because out of that one in five, it's disproportionate black and brown people dying. Yes. Yes, sir. We can use that money to help heal our land. Yeah. Come but on. We got to be in place to do it. We have to be in place. Right. And we have so to be in power. What I said is I need to do this with partners. Okay. I want to go far. I don't want to go fast. Yeah. And so I looked around. I saw that there's some green banks out there. Okay. That have great history in doing green banking, but not a history of working in our communities. Preach. And I look at some green bank and CDFIs who have great history okay. and work in our communities, but they're new to doing green. They yeah, don't right. know how. That's right. So I said, I can come in and help both and do my thing. I said, but I'm going to target okay. three different nonprofits that are beacons to our community. Yeah. First was the Black Church or Facebook yes, organization. Yes, sir. I said, you're going to see a Jiffy Lube shut down before you see a church shut down. Come on, somebody. How, but however, a Jiffy Lube can get alone. It's hard for a church. To a finance, Black church. A Black church at that. Yeah. Finance its operation. That's right. The second one are our minority serving institutions, our HBCUs. Come on. Yes, sir. And the third was specifically public housing, but, you know, multifamily facilities. I got it. If I hit these three types of nonprofits, yeah. they will be a beacon to the rest of the community to make that next step. Yeah. So with this money from what I call Aunt Ira, the inflation reduction, <laughs> Uncle, Bill, Uncle Bill, the bipartisan infrastructure legislation and All cousin right. and, and um and cousin chip and that's for the new chips and energy production for EV and what have you. So these the three acts on our... are sending sending trillions into our community. Yes but sir. If you're not ready, it ain't never gonna come back again. If you don't know what you want, you can't have it. Even right now. Even right, right. so we we partnered with you with Green the Church and Jim that's and I. Right. That's right. In the church, finds the churches that are ready. That's right. Gemini sizes the opportunities. Green Power Ventures works with you, the Green the Church Renewable Energy Development. That's and we right. And create a special purpose vehicle that houses the facility that would be putting at the church. We bring in tax equity investment and we bring in agreeable financing. When I say agreeable financing, we're not trying to go and do six, seven, and eight percent. If it's eight right. percent, the highest we're gonna be is six percent. Got we're it. We're gonna be better than the market. Yes, sir. Right? We're That's gonna right. provide the pre-development capital of Friedman Green Bank and Trust. Yeah. We'll provide construction loans. Yeah. And we'll source or provide permanent financing. Green Power Ventures is gonna provide the tax equity. We're doing a project right now, Reverend Ambrose and Right outside of Detroit. Okay. And it's uh, called Hype Athletics. It's a nonprofit. Got it. So I said, let me go to the athletic community, found a gentleman that works with him, and now pro athletes are oh, that's good. That, that activity. That's good. Uh, that's, that's the stuff. 
And this community that's around it is black and brown, okay. poor. And for the last 20 years, this organization has been helping provide solutions to this community. Yeah. Doesn't that sound like what we have in the church? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And just like these yes, athletes sir. came and helped this athletic facility, I'm looking, you're looking, we're looking for mm -hmm. our church folks as That's well right. as our athletes. That's right. Well into entertainers. That's right. To lower their tax bills. That's right. And help the church. That's right. So the church can say the doors of the church are open, are even open. the utility is down. That's right, Doc. We want to come into the church. We want to electrify it. We want yeah. to get rid of energy waste, energy yeah. efficiency, weatherization. We want to provide it with solar. We want to provide it with storage and EV charging so that it's making money as well. And now the church is stronger. And when we say that we are stewards of the earth, come on, start at the church. That's right. And Aunt Ira, Uncle Bill, and yeah, Cousin Jim are Jim. ready to help us. Yes, sir. Let me tell you one more thing. This surprised me. In 2021, $31 billion of philanthropy came sure. to the state of Georgia. I'm listening. Grants were given to the state of Georgia. Come on. Not 1%, but 0.54% of that money went to benefit people of color. What you say? Just a little bit over a half a percent. That means out of all the money that came down. Over 99% of the money that came to the state of Georgia was specifically not to benefit people of color. And this is philanthropy. This is still problematic. And so, right. And this is philanthropy. Again, what individuals are doing with their own money, right? To so their degree. And now you're talking about in the public space where tax dollars are coming that are earmarked for our community and it's not and it's not going to be easy it's not going to happen without a fight i think that's what i hear you saying i'm saying People that we'll eat our lunch remember i said we got to get ready right yes sir and so we got to look and see that the people who could be helping getting us ready have a history of not even working with us that's right that's right and we can't depend on them that's right that's they right. can step up and get their blessing. Of course. Of course. But we're going to go on because we have a history of doing so. I want to be clear that our, our help is going to come not from the mountains, but he who made the mountains. Come on, Doc. Doc, our help coming from the Lord. And uh -huh. I think for us especially, you know, we talk about the black church movement. And a lot of times <laughs> I think about the black church the same way that individuals talk about Native American tribes, right? Like mm -hmm. the, these are, are entities. I often say that these church buildings, uh, you, you know, that once we had 14 million acres of farmland, but we were lynched off of that land. And now we have about 4 million or under that. And the reality is we don't own a lot of skyscrapers. A lot of us could not afford to buy homes, but our grandmothers, those grandfathers put what they had together. They sold fried chicken dinners and sweet potato pies, and they bought those buildings, right? They bought St. John, right? They bought Macedonia. They bought Mount Calvary, and they had note-burning services. They were proud of the work that they did because they had something. And per capita, the Black church, we don't own the local bar barbershop building. Uh -huh. A lot of time, wherever you eat your soul food, we oftentimes don't own that building. One of the only places that we own in community are these faith buildings. They are our sacred trust. And the yes. reality is many people are, are, are going to come from, like you said, from outside of the community, from outside of the church experience, attempting, number one, to capitalize off of the funds that are coming. And it would be almost cussed, it, but it would be a crying shame that if we allow, if the black church does not step up and take its position and make sure that we capitalize off of the only thing uh, that, our, that our ancestors have left us and that we be good stewards of that and that we figure out what that looks like and that we are not just off takers, but mm -hmm. we become, and this com conversation always fills my soul because you are a visionary and you're not just talking about what we get off of it, 
but you're talking about the entire system. Right. So, right. So we would we talk a lot, not just about but not just about you, you know, black folk having food, but we're talking about food sovereignty and how can we control our own food systems. Preach. And you're talking right about like now we're talking about energy. Yes, we're not just talking about being all takers of energy and just lowering our carbon footprint. But we're talking about how can we control our own energy systems. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we want to be even more mindful of that. Let's just look at and talk through this, right? Sure. Money comes in from a black parishioner to the sure. church paying their tithes and offerings. That's right. The church then pays for its IT services. Okay. Who is the IT service person, right? Is yeah. it somebody from the community or not? And then if it's somebody from the IT, uh, the IT person the yeah. has to buy electricity, all of right. a sudden the money is now out of the community. It's already gone. <laughs> or the IT person has to pay their bill for rent or for mortgage. Yeah. yeah. Usually, we don't go to somebody in our community, so the money no. is already out. So it's how already gone. does it go out of our community? So Quick, fast, we have been remember. intentional in building an ecosystem of black and brown founders so that when we need somebody who does energy efficiency, electrician, engineering. Say so. We made sure that we had qualified people. I don't believe in they don't exist. They do right. exist. Oh, they definitely exist. Right. Yeah. We made sure that we knew who these people were and who That's we, right. and they knew us. That's right. That's right. And so when we come and with the the churches, the, the churches are sourced by. Sure. And then they're sized by. That's right. And then the engineering by. Yeah, human as much as we can on the equipment, and when there's not an equipment, we encourage somebody in the community. This is something that you need to be doing. If you if there's no black panel manufacturer, we got to say, hey, we need a black panel. We need a black panel. That's that's we right. We need a and black inverter. We need we need, and this is going to be something that was going to be going that is going to be needed for not only this year but for the next 20, 30 years. That's right. We need people who do maintenance. Come on. So, you know, we're pushing um, and, and letting people know where the opportunities are and how large. And in 2024, okay. we're looking to do 100 churches each at a million dollars. So $100 million of work in That's Georgia right. alone. That's right. And then after that, multiply that by 20 because we're going to do 100 in 20 states. 2,000 yes, churches. Yes, sir. And this model of bringing the bringing the black and brown community to the table to do the work. Yes, sir. Energy That's efficiency, weatherization, EV, solar, storage, all of this, electrification, engineering, yes. uh, maintenance. There are going to be needs of cutting lawns just so that they, you can keep the stuff off the solar. Electricity That's right. is coming in. All That's of right. these are jobs that we are creating that can be in the community. If That's my God people free. who are called by my name. <laughs> what happened themselves? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There and that's is what a we're healing. Doing. We're humbling. Yes. And saying, here are the opportunities. This money is coming down. That's right. This is how we can use it to build us up. That's right, Doc. And, and so I when I said this is the closest thing to reparation. It is. And we got to prepare ourselves for it. It is. This is what I'm saying. That, and the beauty of it is, oftentimes we are, you, you know, one trick of the uh, devil is to tell people that there's not enough for, for everybody. Um, and oftentimes we, we try to hoard stuff. And the reality is with what's coming down the pipe, anybody who's in a hoarder mentality, you'll choke exactly. because it's too much. <laughs> it's, it's too much. The best thing that we can do right now is empower one another. The best thing that we can do right now is share information so that everybody can participate. And that's a part of the work that we're doing. Listen, I know, listen, listen, this conversation could go on and on and on ah. till the break of dawn, let me tell you. But again, so blessed uh, to have some time from Dr. Reginald Parker here with us and so excited about the work that he's doing with Green Venture, Green Power Venture. 
work that he's doing with Op Connect, work that uh, he's doing with the Freedmen's Green Bank, work that we are doing together in concert because we need one another. And want to tell you, you all, uh, let me see, as we close those out, uh, give them some information if they want to contact you. And then I want to get just your, your last word of encouragement as we move forward. All right. If you want to reach me, very easy, R. Parker at greenpower.ventures. So you there see you how to spell it, greenpower.ventures. So uh, that's email. But I'm also on social, LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. There you go. Very easy, easy to uh, catch us on those three platforms. We don't try to do every platform because every platform ain't for us. I know that's right. All right. That said, the other pieces, those are email and platform. If you are interested in having your church, go to Green the Church. There you go. Go to Green the Church. He'll set it up. He'll way that the carols work with you to get you situated is white glove treatment. That's it. If you're interested in being uh, uh, and, and offering services as electricians, this, that, and the other, yes. you can come to either one of us. That's it. You will be handled. You will be helped. You will be put in, uh, plugged in. And we have another partner, Gemini. If you are interested in being a tax equity investor, we're here for you. Come on, Doc. So, you know, what we're doing is purpose-driven uh, because if not us. That's right. Then who? Then who? And we've been called for such a time as this. My God. My God. Brothers and sisters, you've heard it today live and in person. Dr. Reginald Parker, we thank God for his ministry. We thank God for his growth, his obedience to move through levels of education. We thank God that he has the ability to walk with kings, but as you can see, he has not lost the common touch. He is with us. And so as we move and we talk about this work, this work is for us and by us. And like, you you know, Emmanuel, right? The Christ is with us. We are Amen. together. And I thank and praise God for him. Listen, brothers and sisters, until next time, this is Pastor Ambrose Carroll with Green the Church, letting you know once again that the race is on. God bless you. Amen. Amen.